since we have three uh, terrific actresses, I'd love to get a little bit um, about your backgrounds and how you uh, sort of got started in, in this racket. Um, and Nika, do you have a memory of the very first play or uh, stage show you saw as a kid that you thought I'd want to be a part of this, whatever this thing is, I'd like to be a part of it? It was actually not a play, it was Alvin Ailey. Oh, the I dance? saw Alvin Ailey uh, and I saw Revelations mm -hmm. and I was very small. And I remember feeling like, I can do that. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt in that moment that I could do that and I wanted to be there with them. And it invigorated me. It, it was such a sensual reaction mm. to what they were doing and, uh, and visceral. Um, and I didn't decide at that moment that I wanted to, not actually wanted to be on stage, but I remember feeling it was like electricity was moving through my body, watching those people use themselves. And I felt like in Revelations, they were actors in that piece. The way that they did that piece, it wasn't like, it was technical because they are such, such technicians, but you weren't watching people go from movement to movement. So you could be like, oh, well, that's a really phenomenal, you know, Bombajan or whatever. It was, it was the, yeah, <laughs> we'll see if that's I'm a real word later. You know, but watching them play the history yeah. of this story, of this dance, I, I thought that was so moving. How old were you when you I don't even remember. I was very small. I, I couldn't have been more than six, hmm. maybe, at the time. But I do remember going home, and my mother had a fan because she had been to Barbados and she'd gotten all these fans and I don't know, they were in her room. And I was fanning myself all around the <laughs> upstairs of our house, uh, revelationing myself through the house. <laughs> so I don't, you know, I don't know if that was, I don't remember a specific theater performance that, that made me say I want to do theater. I just sort of fell into theater. Yeah. But I do remember that moving me in a way that nothing had. And for you, Latanya, when you were... Uh yeah, when I was growing up, I was always involved in some theatrical venture and something because somehow I could remember lines and they figured that out early when I was like around five. <laughs> and so consequently around Atlanta, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, there, were, there was always something cultural going on that they want to take little colored children to. <laughs> so my Aunt Doris Rogers, who was a great proponent of colored children and taking them around, <laughs> took me to see Camelot oh, yeah. and at the Atlanta auditorium which has been torn down I think that was the name of it then the Atlanta auditorium or something like that and I was undone because there used to be on every Sunday night Disney used to come on the wonderful world of yes. With Walt hosting Disney. it yes yes, yes with Walt Disney yeah. I would sit mesmerized I thought that was the greatest thing in the world I lived in such a fantasy land it was unbelievable so I was used to seeing that and when she took us to see Camelot I was floored that there were actually people <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> I was undone. I was, oh God, and it was, oh God, the actor has died now. I can't was, it, uh, who, uh, was it Richard Harris? Or, no, it was uh, Richard the, Burton? Uh, it was the other one. Okay. Who toured in Canada? Oh, Robert Goulet. Robert Goulet. Robert. And I said, oh my God. And anyway, that's what I saw. And from then on, I was hooked. <laughs> and then we had a teacher named Georgia Allen who took me to, um, the Atlanta University Center to be in some children's plays. I was done. I, you know, I was we spoke about Georgia Allen uh, when I talked to her on the yeah, phone. She recently died, right? Yes, so she did. was a big influence in your. Yes, she was. Thank you. Yes, she was. Yeah, yeah. And Sophie, for you uh, as a little, the little kid. Yeah, I can remember exactly the moment. Um, I, um, we have this thing in Britain called the Royal Variety Show. I don't think it's still running, and it's on every year. And the Queen, they get the Queen out and to the theatre, <laughs> and then they like show bits and pieces from all the shows mm -hmm. and they showed so i was watching on television i wasn't actually at the theater mm -hmm. so i was watching these different like um different shows do their numbers and they had brought on annie which was i know i would love to say it's something mm -hmm. more kind of rarefied mm -hmm. but it was annie right? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, they it, like brought so. in a kind of annie production from america and one of the little girls in that was playing one of the orphans was black mm -hmm. and i had hardly seen black people on the stage and television and when I was young in Britain, it just wasn't much done. Yeah. So it was, it's so striking to me that I just thought, that's what I want to do. And I never wavered since then. That was exactly that moment mm. that happened. Although my mom, Ben, like we saved up, we went to go and see the actual production of Annie 
that came in mm. the following year, and there was no black people in it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for the little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the little girl? It was an American production, I think, and then they did the British production. So in those days, mm. in England, yeah. it was there just wasn't, it was, I mean, even now it's a lot of costume dramas. Of course, there's mm. black people on television, but it wasn't, it just wasn't much. So it was a, com it was a combination of that and also seeing a couple of early Mike Lee films, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. which were about, council, we call them council estates, which is tenement. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And they had people of different ethnicities, ethnic, how do I say the word? Ethnicities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. yeah. Mm. But you know, when you mentioned my mom brought home, my mother went to see The Wiz oh, yeah, yeah. on Broadway. And so we had the soundtrack in my house. I can tell you my poor cat, Listen to me sing Be a Lion in my living room to him more times than, than probably he appreciated. <laughs> I would make him sit. I'm like, no, sit, because I'm going to sing Be a Lion to you. What was your, what, what's the first Broadway show you saw? I don't remember. You grew up here in New York? Did you grow up here in New no, York? No, I'm from Connecticut. From Connecticut, right. But you would have come Serafina. Seen... Serafina, oh, yeah, right. My first was Pearly, Pearly Victorious. What? He was coming to New York as a kid. You went to mm -hmm. see. Oh. What well, was it, Pearly Victorious? The, it was the Pearly, Pearly Musical. Pearly the Musical. Pearly the. Oh, right. I forgot there were two. There were two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the musical. <laughs> right. And what was With the first? Cleavon Little. That's right. That's right. Um, and directed, by the way, The Wiz by the great Jeffrey Holder, who's still who's yeah. still with us. He's at the Actors' right. Home in New Jersey, yes. actually. And you, uh, I know you saw the Annie girl on stage, but did you see, or on television, mm -hmm. but did you see your first stage show? Was that Annie as well, when you were looking for the... the um, yeah, I, I saw two that year. Well, that, I was very young, but I saw Sweeney Todd. And oh, I saw, oh. Um, oh, that's and, good. And, and I remember them so well, because they were oh. highlights yeah. of my childhood. I mean, there was the big events of my childhood was going to the stage. And then I got, it, they had a, the Royal Court Theatre, which is a theatre that I work at a lot in England. Yeah. And when I was 15, or 16, they had a, a writer's group. They advertised, I was, I, when I was 16, I already had a job, I'd left school. Mm -hmm. And they had, a, they had advertised in the back of a Time Out magazine, which they have here. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyone interested in writing, come along on Tuesday. And I thought, yeah, I was just doing a menial job, and mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna go along. <laughs> and I went along, and a writer called Hanif Kurashi, who ended up being a kind of film writer, was yeah. running the workshop at the time, and, um, I just, jo I didn't, I mean, I didn't want to be a writer. I just wanted to be where it was mm. happening, you know. I didn't care. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I kind of joined a writers group, and then I was, in the end, I ended up acting up other people's uh, bits, and then I became part of the Royal Court Youth Theatre, and then I met mm. Carol Churchill, who I'm still friends with, you know, mm. uh, from all that time ago, and Max Stafford Clark, and that was, I was 15, 16. My introduction was the Royal Court. That's what got okay. me writing there. And so, although I love doing classics. New writing is what I've been involved in for 25 years. So, yeah. And Latanya, your, <laughs> your first professional job where suddenly you get a paycheck to do this kind of thing that you dream of? Was with Woody King at the New Federal Theatre, Perdido by Soledad. <gasps> oh. You know Soledad and that whole crew? I do. I do. Perdido. What'd you get paid? Probably, I think tokens. Because <laughs> <laughs> <the> subway <laughs> tokens. I know that one. <laughs> no. Subway tokens. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> There's free coffee downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real actor's life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because we saved up. I saved up before I got here, so I thought this, that was, you know, during a year. I just <laughs> went along. <laughs> Tokens. Yeah, that's yeah. Woody. Yeah. And you, Anika, your first, the first time they actually presented you with a paycheck for doing something you dreamed of doing. Um, I did Pippin at the Western Stage. Huh? I was in grad school at the time, mm -hmm. and that was my summer, summer performance. But I think... I got my equity card doing Insurrection, Holding History by Robert O'Hara mm -hmm. at the Geary Theater mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And I got my equity card in Atlanta yeah. doing The Best Man with Jim Way and E.G. Marshall, Dick DeJory, and Kevin McCarthy. Wow. Wow. E.G. I loved E.G. Marshall as a kid, the CBS Radio Mystery Theater too. hosted That's by how e. I got Marshall. to New York. I got to New York because uh, Joseph Papp came to see E.G. Marshall in Atlanta, and he saw us in the thing, and he said, you know, you really should come to New York. There's a, you know there's a New York Times article about that where I talk about that and how I went to the public theater and said, Mr. Papp sent for me, and they said, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> <laughs> 
I got a job. <laughs> I did get a job. <laughs> that is a that's amazing, Mr. Babson. For me, there are, and then there are those are there moments uh, in your career, Sophie, where you you is there the one role where suddenly you get the attention? Was there kind of a breakthrough role for you where in England it was Troilus and Cressida, Trevor Nunn's production, Trevor Nunn's production, yeah, and I played yeah. Cressida, and that was that was where I probably got the big sort of step up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd been acting for about 10 years before that, but, but I'd, and I'd been jobbing, you know, I'd, I was at the Royal Shakespeare Company for two years and I'd done you know, lots of, we call them spear carrying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call them that here as well. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I'd done lots of that and, uh, and then playing some sort of smaller roles and then I'd done stuff at the Royal Court and then um, I was doing a, a show at the Young Vic and then he came to see that and then I got that cut. Oh, so Trevor sought you out after he saw you at the Young Vic to play Cressida. Well, I had to audition yeah, well, several in times. Part, <laughs> <laughs> Backwards and forwards, but luckily it was only across the road. So yeah. I it. <laughs> but you say now you don't re read reviews, but uh, uh, presumably you got very good reviews for that part. Did you did you get around to reading your reviews for Troilus and Cressida? Well, at that time I read them afterwards, but then I remember thinking, what about if I never read them? And I thought, well, that's freedom. You know, cause I used to, what I used to do is I used to just read them after the show had finished. Mm -hmm. But then if you actually don't read them at all, then you are never really thinking about it. Mm. You know? But that's just me, I'm too sensitive. And if I was more thick skinned, I'd read it, but I'm just not, I'm just too sensitive. That's why I don't, I don't watch even when I do television, I don't watch stuff back anymore. I just stopped mm -hmm. because it doesn't help my performance. So if it doesn't help the performance, then it goes. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a consumer of your great reviews over the years or do you uh, take- I'm a consumer. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch every episode of 100 Center Street? Oh, yes, I did. Right. You know, that's Where my you great start. friend. That was yeah. my great friend. Sydney was my great friend. So, of course, plus I was watching so I could say, okay, now, you know, the director and the critic, now I should have maybe lifted my head and turned mm. or pointed this way like Mr. Kerr would have. <laughs> so you like to analyze yourself. You, I do. Just wanna, you don't want to watch, but you want to look at it and see. Everyone has such different, yeah, it's and a, it really helps some people, and then it doesn't help others. It doesn't yeah. help, but I try to, I'm always listening to see, oh, is that what you saw? Well, maybe I, that's not what I'm trying to do, so maybe I need to be clearer. Hmm. Where do you come down on this, uh, Anika? Do you uh, read your reviews? Do you study your performances? I may read a review years later, hmm. but it takes that long. Mm. I, um, I, when blogs first started picking up, I read some blogs when I did Pearly. It got my heart hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You get blown once and you don't know, go back. Do well, anymore. I'll tell you, they loved you and Caroline or Jane. Uh, <laughs> thank you. You'll oh, find really? out. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a dangerous to place to now. go. To read when, when you're... No, I don't even play with blogs. I don't even play. I don't play. I don't... Mm -mm. Because everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, and yeah. everybody at this point is a critic because they also have a computer. That's right. So, you know, <laughs> no, that's not for me. Um, and Caroline, this is the tenth anniversary of our opening. Is wow. it, Caroline? Was that your today. breakout role? Was that, that was oh, it, it was. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. And George put you in. George C. Wolf. George right? C. Wolf. It's been ten years. You won a Tony. Years. I did. Ten yes. years. I did. And Tony Kushner. It doesn't seem right, but it is. <laughs> it doesn't seem right at all. Um, Tony, I had worked with, Tony saw me in Insurrection mm -hmm. in, at ACT, cast me in his play, Hydro Taffier, The Death of Dr. Brown at Berkeley Rep. And then I came to New York and he asked me to audition for the radio. I didn't know what that meant. It just didn't make sense to me. Oh, the somebody, radio. I was like, the right. radio, I don't, mm, <laughs> what are we gonna knobs? I don't know, <laughs> uh, you know? So I went in as me, and I usually go in as whatever character I'm going to do, I'm full that when I walk in the room. So I went in as me, and like didn't have a great audition because I was just unsure of the road radio. I was supposed to travel. <laughs> I didn't understand. And so they called me back, they said, we'd really actually rather you come back and audition for Emmy who didn't have much to do at that point. She had like a scene and a half and she was, I think, going to disappear at some point. And so I went and auditioned for Emmy. That made sense to me. This was a person. I could get, I could get into that if we were animate. And, <laughs> we're a washing machine. <laughs> yeah, right? And, you know, the rest is history. And I, I'm so grateful for that because that, that work with those people, that cast, we used to watch each other on stage. We would watch the next person come on because everybody was phenomenal in that play. And being able to work with that trio of geniuses, George C. Wolfe. I don't think you called us 
geniuses yet. So you 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 heard yeah. them wrap that one up. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to, I'm on, <laughs> well, my, I was talking about my creators, George <laughs> Sewell, uh, Janine Tesori, and Tony Kushner. I mean, it couldn't. It was a battlefield, and it oh, yeah. was phenomenal and amazing, and I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yeah, yeah. Three years of workshops. I, I want to segue, wow. pick up on something um, that she that you brought up there, Latanya. I mean, it, it is it fun for you guys to watch each other in this play? Because you all have great moments and, and great scenes. We don't really get to because we're with each uh, other. Yeah. I've not seen any yeah. of those scenes. Yep. Yep. We're there. We're well, together. that's right, you're always on there. We're, we're on, always on the there. Yep. I've never seen any of the scenes other than when we were I have. Stage. Well, backstage, I can I'll watch the monitor sometimes yeah. because yeah because when you all are on when he comes in in the so dark the monitor it reminds me of um you don't get off stage of right. the honeymooners <laughs> 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 You don't know what you never. Is. Well, but it's, it's, good, it's, it's it Sophie, it's a but good thing you don't know that reference uh, because you would not be able to play this. But don't tell me, don't tell me. <laughs> I've often thought that Walter Lee reminds me of Ralph Cramden. Well, that he comes yeah. up with these these inventions that he wants to give yeah. money for. It and looks you, and like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So we got to wrap it up. How much time? We're we're we're, we're done. We're done. All right. Well, uh, this is great talking to you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You were wonderful. <laughs>